Hey everybody, it's Warwick here from Beware and I just wanted to share with you our latest newsletter. If you aren't subscribed, then go to www.beware.co.za forward slash subscribe. And uh, yeah, our latest email that's gone out is uh, six ways to maximize how to, how to maximize your honey sales and uh, how you can make your honey sweeter. So if we just, these aren't exhausted by the way, but yeah, I uh, just thought it's cool. We're going to focus on, focus on these over the next couple of weeks and break them down into case studies. But these are ideas I've either I've used personally or and or in business. So uh, let's just cover them quickly in this uh, video. And thanks for joining us today. Uh, so like and subscribe to catch the next ones in the series. But idea number one is just add nuts. You know, take a small gro small jar of of, um, of nuts. You know, pick and choose of your choice, and then just top it up with your raw honey. And you can market that as a premium product uh, with at least a 15 to 30% difference in the original price that you would have gotten for raw honey. Um, and then idea number two is infusing the honey. So you can get healthy medicinal uh, jars of honey where you actually infuse and, and, and imbue the honey A with the flavor of that particular spice or herb like lavender or thyme for example. And um, and or and you also get the, the, the benefit of having the medicinal properties of that herb over time. Uh, it'll seep, it'll kind of be drawn out by the honey. Um, and uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting way of being able to have a mutual benefit from both the herb and the spice involved. And obviously each herb and spice carries its own different properties. You know, lavender is good for the skin and it's healthy, you know, for good for blood pressure and so on and so forth. And cinnamon would be good for blood pressure and for lungs and things like that. So, and they'll obviously taste very different if you put them in two separate jars of the same raw honey. Uh, the lavender one will taste a bit like lavender and the cinnamon one with cinnamon in it will taste a bit like cinnamon too. Uh, so it makes a cool gift and it's just something different that you can add a little extra uh, extra bit of money onto your pasta for that particular product. Idea number three, uh, and this one's one of my favorites, is diluting your honey. And uh, you know, I, this is a picture of my personal me that I've made uh, the last year or two. And uh, you can also add it to whiskies and gins and things like that if you are a distillery and doing that professionally. Just remember you do need a permit if you are going to be looking for this to resell it. And um, yeah, you can make honey beer as well. Honey beer is only about five days. Need is a minimum of eight weeks uh, before you can get your first racking. But obviously uh, it can, it's a lot longer than that, usually up to six months, even longer if you, if you leave it to get a better taste overall in the product. But yeah, idea number four, Creaming the honey, now this is a very, fairly simple idea, again, uh, similar to the nut idea, is simply all you do is you aerate the honey, your raw honey, it becomes creamed and smooth, like a consistent peanut butter base type of um, spreading, uh, so which I think in, in some cases I actually I actually think it's an even better taste uh, than, or experience anyway, than having the raw honey, and uh, absolutely phenomenal, and again, you can increase your price on that in, as uh, per, per jar that you sell. Uh, when compared to raw honey. Um, I love this one. Idea number five is making your honey saucy. So, uh, we've got this Inapana product example here where they've got honey mustard uh, salad dressing, but you know you can make any kind of marinade sauces, uh, bastings, salad dressings, that kind of thing. Uh, again, just with food, make sure whatever you are making, the same with the, the, the honey needs and things is that you do need, to, and with any of this actually, you should be, you know, you must be practicing good hygiene and sterilization practices for handling with food and processing food. But uh, yeah, great, great idea that uh, to um, push the, the, the use of your honey and, and differentiate, and not only differentiate, but also to add value to other products that your honey will then uh, go a lot longer in the end result, whatever your product is. And lastly, but certainly not uh, at least, or certainly not the only, six, only ideas out of six, there's many more than just six ideas, but these are our top six we're sharing with you. Uh, and that is to nurture your skin. You know, you can add raw honey to skin skincare products like facial scrubs, uh, shampoos. It can be a part of the formula in a shampoo. And usually with the facial scrubs, you can add it with sugar and sometimes with salt and a bunch of other. Uh, you could either have it raw exactly like that, or you could use it with a bunch of other herbs and spices again, which are really going to elevate the end product, but obviously also the end cost and the value add. But yeah, um, what we've done since uh, since sharing this idea with you guys, idea number six, is that we've also created a DIY skincare, skincare recipe book. 
Uh, the Home Skin Alchemist Guide has got 13 do it yourself natural beeswax creams, balm with soles recipes in there. And uh, yeah, each one of those, once you've got your ingredients, you know, it will only take you, it will take you 60 minutes or less to make. So pretty awesome to try that one out. If you're interested in making either your own DIY skincare products or something that you may want to build on in terms of uh, getting to grips with uh, starting to sell some products of your own. I give ours a test in this, in this uh, guide and then you can start playing around with your own after that. Also, here's an example of a demijohn, just so that you guys can see what it actually looks like in the process. I mean, there's my picture of finished ones that, have, that are still curing. You can see the sediment at the bottom of the leaves. Okay, and then these are bottled ones, which we've now finished. But this is a picture of an actual demijohn that's in process in the first 8 to 12 weeks. And it's a melly mel, so it's a fruit-based mead. It's got about 4 or 5 oranges in there, and a lemon, and a bunch of raisins, and a bit of yeast. Obviously water and honey. But the beauty about it is that you've got like a 4 to 1 ratio of, of water to honey there. So your honey goes a really long way. Um, but it is a waiting game for this one. Uh, there are ways to get, you know, a sort of a honey wine out within about, uh, say, 8 to 12 weeks. But uh, my preference is that you, you know, that one leaves it for a lot longer than that. Uh, and it can let it cure for at least up to up to a year because you get a better taste of product and uh, a bit of a better, bit of a better overall, overall flavor in, the, in in your palate and uh, and you can back sweeten as well but yeah cool that's pretty much our, our email that just went out so if you're interested if you're not a if you're not a subscribed member then www.bware.ca.za forward slash subscribe or catch us again here on YouTube and or Facebook and our other social media chat uh, uh, channels where you can get our get access to our email data, uh, our email newsletters, and tips.